God is so profoundly incomprehensible to a human being. In fact, beyond any human being's ability to comprehend that God and God's great love for us little beings, us little creatures, God said, I need to, besides prophets and teachers, I need to show people who I really am so that they can really come to me and really know how much I love them. So God expressed God's self in a human being called Jesus. And um, I'm not a big enough fool to explain the mystery of the incarnation, <laughs> but Jesus was fully God. God expressed in the form of a true human being. Um, something that's really impossible to wrap your mind around that concept, but um, it's one of the reasons why they call it faith. Some things you just accept <laughs> without ever really being able to completely grasp it. Now God's spirit had spoken to many people. Um, many prophets and teachers all over the world. Everyone in the world has had the ability to hear the voice of God through men and women who have been inspired by God, prophets and teachers. The problem, there's several problems, but the problem is sometimes people don't get it quite right. And another problem is a lot of times the interpreters of the prophet or teacher um, continue to confuse <laughs> experience because people that have had primary experiences of God know that it's ultimately ineffable. So here you are trying to translate an ineffable experience into human terms. And so very often these things end up as rules and laws, which isn't God. Rules and laws are not God. They're suggestions <laughs> about you know, characteristics of a godly life. Um, but the real experience of God is beyond, beyond law, beyond rules, even beyond expression, beyond verbal expression. Um, it's a profound heart change. And so we have prophets and teachers telling us all over the world, in every culture, in every time, in every land, and basically not doing a very good job of it, interpreting what they have sensed in their heart God wants. So God puts God's very self, the completeness of God, in a human being. Um, and interestingly enough, in a place that's the cost, crossroads of Europe and Asia and Africa, the three major continents of the five continents, <laughs> you know, or if you consider America's two continents and the six continents, but whatever, you know, of the inhabited continents, he puts it in the center of the three major, Asia, Europe, and Africa, in this little crossroads, which has been known for thousands of years as a place where the continents meet and cross paths. And God puts the spirit in a man whose origins are as lowly as it is humanly possible to be lowly. Um, in a man who in word and deed was humbler than a slave and did things that slaves would not be expected to do because it would be below the dignity of a slave to do. Um, a man who was so profoundly simple and loving and good that the world could not bear his presence amongst them because it reminded people of their own sinfulness and their own complexity. Um, and the very people that Jesus came to, a people who had been given an assignment by God 
to be a messenger of the monotheistic God and that made them quite unique in all of the world because um, overwhelmingly the whole world was polytheistic and these people almost alone were the only monotheists these people were given the special assignment and to bring people into the knowledge and into relationship of the one God a loving God, a God of mercy the creator God um, amongst those people some accepted the presence of God in their lives in the person of Jesus and some were unable to accept it but in their um, desire to rid them selves of him unbeknownst to them actually fulfilled his plan of um, suffering their torture their abuse their scorn and ultimately their um, crucifixion and in that showing his love and forgiveness for all of our sin and also showing all of us that the ultimate um, fear that we all have lived with, the fear of annihilation and death, was um, a phantom. And that through our relationship with him, that phantom could be vanquished from our consciousness, from our lives. And that we were invited to live in this world and to be after our demise in this world to be raised up and brought to heaven and to develop spiritually in heaven into the perfection that will allow us to experience the love of God. So when one speaks of Jesus, Christ Jesus, Christ, one is talking about two different things, but they're the same thing, two different aspects of the same thing. One is the prototype of what it means to be a human being. Jesus was the first human being and we're invited to become human through him. Um, secondly, the action of God, the Christ, the Logos, the Word of God, the Spirit of God, um, drawing us back to God. And so, um, I guess we most often speak of Jesus Christ as Jesus the man because this is God showing us the way back to God. He's the gate, he's the way, he's the light. Um, there have been many inspired teachers and prophets in the world, but only one Jesus. And um, all of heaven, all the angels and all the saints um, know that Jesus is the one and the way, the truth, and the he, life. To me personally is my best friend. And I call him my best friend because he loved me before I was even created. He loved me when I was created. He loved me when I came into this world. He loved me when I loved him. He loved me when I deserted him. He loved me when I betrayed him. He loved me when I called out to him. He loved me when I came back to him. He loves me today and he'll love me forever. And he has done everything he could do to convince me of his love and to embrace me and to bring me home. Um, to me the purpose of life is to um, as God has used this life of Jesus Christ to show us the way my, the purpose of life is to learn that to learn about it, to understand it, to experience it, and to, in our own 
inimical ways, our own unique ways, to follow that example to the best of our ability. Um, so I try to be like Jesus Christ. And I am profoundly aware of how I fall short of that. But I'm also profoundly aware that, and I was told this in my experience, that my job is not to be perfect. I don't have to be Jesus Christ. I can't be Jesus Christ. All as God wants to me is to do my best. In my own circumstances, in my own life, in my own way, to just do my best to follow him. And as far as God is concerned, as far as Jesus is concerned, that's plenty good enough. Um, to put my trust in him, and no matter what I do, no matter how badly I do it, <laughs> no matter how much I fail to do it, um, that if my heart is sincerely trying to uh, follow his example, um, I'm okay. <laughs>